Hello there, wherever you're watching from in the world, thank you for joining me. I've been answering a lot of questions today on our Instagram and on our YouTube, so brilliant, please keep them coming in. If you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? We're releasing content two or three times a week now, answering questions, and with a new YouTube channel, this is a fantastic time to get them into me because we're not saturated with a thousand different questions, right? So subscribe, like, comment, and you're gonna get much more of a response than you would on a massive channel where they're looking to clickbait you. This channel is all about honesty. I want you guys to reach the top. I'm gonna give you the truth. I'm not gonna like clickbait and lie you. I'm gonna tell you the truth. So today, someone asked me, how do I shoot the ball harder? Okay, how do I shoot the ball harder? So I'm gonna keep it very linear in regards to the technique and the reality of just kicking the ball harder. This question came in, I think, from a U13, but I'm gonna try and make it applicable to anybody because the other day I coached a guy who was 45 years old and he wanted to be able to smash the ball. He didn't have speed, but he did have a lot of power. So here we go. Number one, relax into the shot. It sounds crazy, right? Because the first thing you do when you're in on goal is think, oh my God, I'm in on goal. And you can hear the crowd, you can sense the crowd. Everyone's going crazy and then you panic and then you blast it over and it lands on the moon. So the first thing you have to do is you have to relax. How do we relax? repetition and practice. The more we do something, of course, well, of course, the more we do something, the more comfortable we get with it. And then of course it becomes like an embodied cognition within inside us where we now recognize what it is. It's like a muscle memory pattern and uh, we actually can relax. So yeah, that's the first point. I think it's the most important point in some ways, relax into the shot. <clears throat> Number two, you wanna lock the ankle. Now, the easiest way that I can explain this, I do it with kids, is when you uh, wanna lock your ankle, grab their foot gently and tell them basically, if I was going to twist your foot all the way around, what would you do? And they say, well, I'd stop you. And what they do kind of naturally is they lock it. And I say, what you just did is what I want you to do all the way when you strike the ball and out of the ball. Okay, so that's number three actually, which is follow through the ball. But lock the ankle, hit the ball, and then follow through with a locked ankle, and then relax once the ball is in the back of the net, basically. Okay, so lock your ankle, it's gonna keep control of the ball. If your foot's wobbling into the shot, the ball isn't gonna be as clean, and you're not gonna get that straightforward uh, striking motion. So that would be my next point. The next one after that is you want to Think about your foot placement in regards to your plant foot, okay? Not that kind of a plant, the where your foot, that's your non-kicking foot goes next to the ball. So we're looking about two, three inches next to the ball, not ahead of it, not behind it, next to the ball with a larger stride into it. We want to really have those legs far apart so that the foot coming from behind can get full momentum into the shot and give you that awesome sound effect of poof, smashing the ball. So a little bit of a larger stride on your final step before the strike. Okay, then someone said to me, which part of the foot? That's actually a really common question. At youth level, kids love to toe punt it. Of course, with a toe punt, one, we have no control of the ball, and two, it's gonna hurt once you're playing with size fives that maybe soak up water on a cold England day. You don't wanna be doing that. It's just, it's not the right way. So you have to be thinking about striking the ball with your big toe knuckle, uh, your first metatarsal, if you wanna get kind of technical with it. It's if this is your foot, you know, you're looking at this part of your foot right here. And some people have said to me in the past, but that's quite hard if you approach a ball like flat on to hit it with that. Well, you don't, you approach the ball from a slight angle when you strike it, so it's gonna hit cleanly on this part of your foot and then you're allowed to kind of dictate the ball by turning your foot and stuff to create spin at the last second. But for today, we're just talking about striking a ball. So, so far we've got relax, lock your ankles, stride into it, plant foot in the correct position. And of course we're using our laces, our metatarsal or our big toe knuckle to strike the ball. After that, watch the ball, watch the ball. The goal is not going to move. It's not gonna grow legs and walk off. The goalie is gonna move, but let's be honest, 
at youth level, even at Premier League level, if you strike the ball perfectly and you place it where you want it to be, like Harry Kane hitting the post and in, it doesn't matter if you've got 18 goalkeepers in there, you're still going to score. So watch the ball because that's the kind of in consistent variable almost because it's moving. The goal is fixed. You know where it is. So watch the ball. I already talked about following through, but then we want to think about the next step. We've got a tech-driven world now. This is a huge advantage. So when you're practicing at home, stick your camera on and record it. Start filming yourself and see, am I actually hitting the points that I just said in my practice? If one of these is off, your shot's gonna be off, right? So record it, watch it in slow motion even, and then fix it. If you're working with a coach, even better, get them to film it and then get them to kind of adjust these things as they go. I do it a lot, even in my camps, I'll film the kids and I'll show them back what it is they're doing because some people are visual learners and some people just have never been aware of what they look like when they play. So that's a really good tip for me. And then the next thing that I would say, this is tip number nine now, I believe, would be practice every possible variation that you can think of in regards to shooting. So you've got you know, your left foot, your right foot, a bouncing ball, a high bouncing ball, um, kind of at your chest level, at your belly button level. You've got to throw in every single variation that you possibly can to kind of replicate what's gonna happen in a game. Now, I'm a believer of the fluid motion of kind of training where you organically create game-like situations within training and that's how we're kind of badge coached nowadays by the US um, badging. So you wanna create organic games which free flow, which create opportunities for the striker to make it game-like. But if you are doing technical one-on-one -on -one focus you know, with a coach and you're specifying attribute training, which is also fine, then you're gonna make sure that you practice these variations. 100 balls on your left foot dribbling in one-on-one. -on -one. Then 100 balls approaching from the left, cutting in. 100 balls approaching from the right, cutting in. Opening up your body to bend the ball. Hitting it firm across the keeper low. You know, there's a thousand ways to strike a ball, so you really just have to practice, as we always say on this channel, you've got to practice until exhaustion, effectively, because the more you practice, the better you get. It's simple. There's no secret to success in life other than working hard and failing. That's really it. You just got to fail at shooting to get better at shooting. A secret one, though, that I'm going to give you right now. This is a secret one. If you've made it to the eighth minute of the video, you're going to get one that no one else has got, which is try being a goalkeeper for maybe even just one session. Even if you're practicing at school, playing goal for a week just in the playground, playing goal. Because if you are a goalkeeper, you get to see everything from the perspective of the striker. And you know what shots were hard to save and which shots were easy to save. You see what I'm doing? I'm reverse engineering the position. Harry Kane did this. Go Google it. Harry Kane played as a goalkeeper when he was younger. He wanted to know where the striker would have more of a success. I think we would kind of say now that that works for him, right? So. That's it. And then the final one is more related to biology. Um, and as you get older, really, which is the application of muscular training and strength training, we can increase our quads, our hamstrings. We can just strengthen our core. We can make our body stronger effectively. And uh, we can't do that when we're so young because our muscles are still growing, our bodies are still growing. But as you reach a higher level into, you know, 16, 17, um, when we can start applying real weight and, and kind of muscle training and strength training in our program. That would be kind of the icing on the cake for me. And those are the tips really. Thank you for watching. Uh, go back and check them out. Please like, subscribe and comment and tell me what you think really that you've been lacking from your own game when striking a ball. And if any of these tips helped you. Um, I put this list together because they're the things that I really focus on myself. And that's it. Go smash those balls. Don't smash anything in your mum and dad's house or college or anything like that. Go find a field, find a goal and go get practicing. Thanks guys.